into Tantaphon. Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exult and be satisfied at her consoling breast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the, to, to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before me, before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are, there, are, are these all of the, of, the, of the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest, who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. He will not, we will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse said, and, and, and had the young man brought, brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the, the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers, and from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in, in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that, that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. 
You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of, of light, from light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in, in, in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore I say to you, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have light of have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples said to him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so, that work, so the works of God might be visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while, while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he, said, when he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with, with the, the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash, in the, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he, he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had, had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed and anointed my eyes and told, him, told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where, where, is, where is he? He said, don't know. They brought the, the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had, had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I watched, and now I can see. 
So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained, and gained his sight until they summoned his parents, the parents of, of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, Is this your son, who you, you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said to him, he, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of, of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if, if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been, had been blind and said to him, give, give God praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, he answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciple too? They ridiculed him and said, You are the man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one comes from. This one is from. The man answered and said to, him, said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a man Born, a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin. Are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking to you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I am, I am, I came into the world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you, you, say, you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lots to be said here in this Gospel. But first, welcome. I was told there's another priest who asked for pictures of all his parishioners so he could put them in the pews. I see now where he's coming from. 
You know, I've, this is my fourth time spring streaming a Mass, and for some reason it's, it's different today. And it's a little harder, because it's Sunday. But, I'm wearing robes today. It's Laetitia Sunday. It is a day to rejoice. Not only because it is Sunday, because we are in the halfway point of Lent. And although this Lent has not rolled out in the way we all thought it would, the Lord has given us a means to go deeper, to really recenter and refocus our lives on Him. We see in the second reading that the comparison between light and darkness. St. Paul says, actually he says the word light six times. He only says the word darkness three times. The light is greater than the dark. In the gospel, Jesus says, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I was preparing a, a summary of my homily to be translated into Spanish, and I, I put that same line in Spanish into Google Translate, and it said, and the way it translated was, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. That God is the light in the darkness. And as long as Christ is in the world, there will always be light. And we have to remember that, that Christ is the light. Christ is bigger than all of this. And that there was darkness in the world long before the coronavirus. That this is just a visible manifestation of darkness, of, of sin, of the effects of sin, of, the, of, the, of what is not of God. But now more than ever is the time to remember that Christ is the light of the world. That we, are, we were in darkness, but in baptism we become children of the light. He says, live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Righteousness, another way to say it is holiness. That as children of light, when we live in the light, when we live for Jesus Christ, the, the fruit is goodness and righteousness, holiness and truth. To learn to be pleasing to the Lord. Do not listen to the fruitfulness of darkness, of bitterness, of despair. I know there are many who are bitter and angry at our bishop. Don't let that bitterness and that anger cloud your judgment and cloud the vision of, of seeing where God is in the midst of this, this hardship. That this pain of not being together at Mass is, is something that affects all of us. But that God is greater than this. And that we are meant to be light in the darkness. Now, now we are called to reach out. I love this. It's like a call to arms that Paul says in the Ephesians. He says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Awake, O oh sleeper! Get up! You're falling asleep! We need you to move! I'm reminded of, of Pearl Harbor. A little history lesson. The Japanese during World War II did a sneak attack on Pearl Harbor, and their whole goal was to destroy the carriers. Of the, of the U.S. Navy. The destroyer and the cripple the U.S. Navy so that they could then, you know, rule, rule the Pacific Ocean. Well, through happenstance, they didn't take out the carriers. 
carriers had your ability to to uh, to do bomb raids and, and you know or a power they were ne- necessary to be to have strength in, in naval battle. Well, they didn't take out the carriers. They crippled the destroyers. They didn't take out the carriers. And the admiral, the head admiral of the Japanese fleet, said. I fear we have just awakened a sleeping giant. You know, at the time, not to say that the United States was not, didn't have its fingers in other countries' business, but for the most part, we were isolationists. We were like, you know, I'm, we can't get involved, we can't get involved. And yeah, we did help in other roundabout ways, but we were like, mm, this, no, we're not going to get involved. The attack on Pearl Harbor woke us up. It united us as a nation and said, we need to take care of this. And the industry of America began. We started pumping out tanks and jeeps and planes and ships. We started training our men and sent them across the Atlantic and the Pacific. We entered the war and changed the tide of the war in favor of good. This whole pandemic is our Pearl Harbor. It's our wake-up call. To say, have I been living my life for Jesus Christ? Have I been living as a child of the light? And what do I need to do to be that light in the world? We, I think, have become complacent as Catholic Christians. Not in every person. I'm not talking about every person, but as a group. We've kind of, you can't really tell the difference between a Catholic and a non-Catholic. And that was a mark of our faith, is that they will know we are Christians by the way we act, by the way we love, by the way we live our lives. We are set apart. And I think this, this whole situation is a reminder, is an eye-opener to the darkness that has been around us for a while. That now is a time for us to awaken from our slumber and to start listening to what God is calling each and every one of us to do. To be grateful for the gifts that we have. To be, to be loving and hospitable, to reach out. As the man that was born blind said, God listens and responds to those. He says, but the ones who, who is devout and does God's will He listens to Him. We have to listen to God first. To hear what His will is for us. To hear how in this moment He's wanting to strengthen our families, our prayer life, our sense of community. That we can be united in this. And to let go of the anger and the bitterness and the the frustration. That is not, even if it's justified, you cannot live there. This is a time to become saints. In times of crisis, the Catholic Church, the Christian people, rose to the challenge. In times of crisis, the Church produced saints. Saints that led people to the light of Jesus Christ. God is calling saints to rise up in this time as well. And you are called to be one of those saints. Each and every one of you. Myself included. You know, David, in the first reading, was the least of his brothers. He had seven older brothers. And the the fact that he, they were all invited and he was just kind of an afterthought. His dad was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, we we do have a younger son. He's out tending the flock. 
He was the least of his brothers, but yet he was chosen to be the next king of Israel. And we see throughout the, the, throughout the, the Old Testament how successful he was at liberating Israel from the, from the chains that bound them. And he kept having victory after victory. God fought for him. Why? Because of his faithfulness. And so we are called to be faithful in this moment, to hold fast, to pray the prayers that we have been given, pray the rosary, the chaplet, pray the stations of the cross, to read our Bibles, and not just to do that as individuals, but to do it as a family. It is not me and God, it's we and God. We are in this together. We are the body of Christ. We are called to put the love and the, the good of others in front of our own. And to accept the sacrifices that are in front of us. And trust that God will bring greater good out of everything. So let us, in this time, be like David, faithful to our Lord, that through us we can become saints and the Lord can raise up saints in this time to bring and, and brighten the light of the world, that Jesus Christ and His light may be seen and shown in the darkness, that people who maybe wouldn't have encountered Christ will encounter Christ. Think about this. How many times have we, how many masses are being streamed or recorded and put online? How many people are exposed to the mass simply because we are doing what we're doing right now? Who wouldn't have heard the message otherwise? Do not despair. God is with us. He is with us in the sacraments that continue to flow. Each of us who are baptized are children of light. And as long as Jesus is in the world, he is the light of the world. Let us stand together and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers and to our Heavenly Father. For our Holy Father, for our bishops and priests and deacons, that we may be good shepherds and guides in this, in this time of darkness, uh, that we may all, and, and for the entire church, that we may see the light that dwells within us uh, for, our, for our baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering from this outbreak, 
uh, from sickness and from those who have died. May they be, experience healing and, the, and, and, and the repose. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists, health professionals, for our first responders, political, uh, public officials, and all those who serve, serve the common good, that they may be wise and prudent in their, in their actions and their policies. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this time of illness, uh, for your mercy and love, Father, that it will strengthen us to have greater trust and faith and goodwill with one another. And let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, for the people who perishes, and for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer you these petitions, and we ask that in your love you may grant them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands we become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine yard. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands we become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hand, at your hand, for the prayer of the Lord is in for our good and good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord. Pray that we may both faithfully revere them and, and present them to you. As, a, a, a fit, as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that, that walk in darkness into the radiance of the faith and brought those born in slavery to, the, to ancient sin through the waters of re regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration as we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end, and acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We pray in the Eucharistic prayer of three. You are indeed holy, O Lord, in all you have created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, your blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, with Saint Andrew, Saint Francis Xavier, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence. We rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Carl, our Bishop, all the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind and names to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait in blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be saved. The body of Christ can be saved for eternal life. spiritual communion. Jesus, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you are already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit me not to Permit me not that I should ever be separated from you. Antiphon. The Lord anointed my eyes. I went, I watched, I saw, and I believed. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malignant enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I might praise thee forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illumine our hearts, we pray, that with the splendor of your grace, that, that we may always ponder what is, what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all, all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live, thank you. Well, again, you are in our prayers, our hearts. Um, this will be uploaded. We have a Facebook page, um, or a YouTube channel that I created yesterday. That um, as soon as I end this, I will upload it onto that uh, that YouTube channel, and then we'll be sending a link to all, putting it on the website as well as Facebook, uh, so people can have access to that. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, our Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace.
Thanks be to God. For the protection of our, of our church, our communities, our families, our country and the world. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>